Assalamu alaikum everyone. Okay, I'm reading your, I'm going through your answers now. Uh, 25, yeah, 25 is the correct answer. Fifty nine fifty is incorrect. Twenty five is the correct answer. So I'll quickly solve it. You know you have questions like these in SAT, SAT or in uh, university admission tests. Us mein is tarah ke questions out there. So basically, if root fifty is your no, it's not fifty. It's twenty five. If root fifty is your diagonal, okay, and since it's a square, that means all the lengths are going to be equal. So A B C D, okay. So basically. You have to find out x square. See, area is ka kya hoga? Area technically is ka x square hoga na? So, I can either find out the value of x and then square it, or I can just find out x square directly. So, using Pythagoras theorem, since the question said that it's a square, so we can use Pythagoras theorem. It's going to be x square plus x square equals to square root of 50 squared. Okay, and x square plus x square. Uh. Okay, Mustafa, you are saying that it's a very complex way to solve it, but you know, this is easier. So you have 2x squared, which is equal to 50. That means x squared is equal to 25. And there you go. x squared is as good as your area. So the answer is 25. Okay, so let me see who got the correct answer. Who's uh, um, name? Mohammed Talal. Okay, good job, Mohammed Talal. And uh, Sayyid Jazib Hassan. Yes. Good job, you guys. Khair, anyway. So, so let's get to work. How was the exam today, by the way? You guys had English today, and I believe some of you also, some students who give history in grade 11, they had history as well. I mean, 25 root, you can use either. Ha, so there are many ways through which you can solve this. I'm not saying okay, this is the only way to get the right answer, but this is the quickest way for sure. <laughs> Walaikum salam. Do you think? Uh, what do I think? What do I think about? I think that's an incomplete question. It went good. All right. Good to hear that. Was it easy? Difficult? I'm IGCSE. Yeah, IGCSE students can watch this. It's fine. So I blundered so bad. I feel like I could have done so much better. Khair, I believe ek paper wa na abhi. If it's English, you have two exams for English, right? So you can always make up for it, inshallah, in the next one. Yes, yeah, sir. I scored 160 out of 200 in my IGCSE school mocks, and that paper was harder than usual. So, do you think? Yeah, why not? I think you can score an A star as well. I mean, if you if the paper was actually harder than usual, then yeah, definitely. No, no, you sh you don't need to know radian for math mensuration, not for O level math. Yes, IGCSE students can also watch this stream. Okay, uh, so those of you who are watching, I would really appreciate if you guys would like the stream and subscribe in case you haven't done that already. Okay, so now without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. Okay, can Kohli mods watch this? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay, now, so this is a question from May, June 2003. I believe most of you who are watching this weren't even born by then. Okay. So let's see how we can do this question. So it says the vertices of the square ABCD lie on a circle of radius R centimeter. All right, there you go. Show that the length L centimeter of a side of square R under root two. Okay, so actually when I saw this question, that's when I came up with the idea of giving this as question of the day. Okay. Are topical post papers effective? Or so if you want to revise a particular topic, you should be doing uh, topical post papers. But other, other than that, you should be doing yearly post papers. Okay. The early past papers will, you know, for like a holistic revision. Okay, so how do we solve this question? First of all, let's extend this diagonal. So this diagonal is going to be equal to 2R. And because it's a square, we can use Pythagoras theorem. We can say L squared plus L squared is equal to hypotenuse squared, which means is equal to 2R squared. Okay. Now, if you solve this, you have 4R squared, which is equal to 2L squared. Now, notice that we have to make L the subject, right? So actually, there's no need to write r first. So it's going to be 2l squared 
which is equal to 4r squared. That means L squared is equal to 2r squared. And now you can take the square root on both sides. So L is equal to square root of 2r squared. Now R is something, R squared is something that you can take the square root of. Root 2 is something you can't take the square root of. I mean, you can with the help of a calculator, but this is paper one. So this is how we're gonna leave it. So it says here, uh, show that, that uh, we had to show that radius is, e uh, the length of the square is equals to R under root two. And that's it, we've, we've shown that. Then it says, by comparing the perimeter of the square and the circumference of the circle, or otherwise show that root two is less than 5.2. Now, if you think about it, the perimeter of the square will be less than the perimeter of the circle, okay? So, because if you look at the shape, you can tell, right, that since the circle is drawn outside the square, it's definite that the perimeter of the circle is going to be more than the perimeter of the square. So, the perimeter, I'm gonna write that down over here. So, later on when you guys are viewing, you know what I've done. The perimeter of square is less than the perimeter of circle. And when we say the perimeter of circle, we're actually talking about what? We're actually talking about the circumference. Tika. Okay. So how will I calculate the perimeter of the square? It's gonna be 4L, Tika. Okay. And this is less than the perimeter of the circle, which means two pi r, okay? Two, sorry, not two pi r squared, just two pi r. Okay, now thankfully the question has already made us work out L in terms of R, so that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna replace R, uh, L with R under root two. Okay, so that's less than two pi R, okay. Then what happens as a result is that the R and the R gets canceled out. Okay, you have two ones R and you have two twos R, okay. Now if you make root two the subject, so right now we're standing over here. Two under root two is less than pi. Now, if I make root two the subject, so root two is equal to what? Root two is equal to pi point two. That's what we had to show in part B. We had to show that root two is less than pi point two. And that's it. We've done that with the help of the perimeter of the square and the per perimeter, which is the circumference of the circle. Okay. Then part C, what special kind of numbers are root two and pi? So root two and pi are basically, remember, rational numbers. Okay, now what are rational numbers? Rational numbers are numbers that cannot be expressed as a fraction of two integers. And since you can't express 58 or under root two as a fraction of two integers, that is why these two are rational numbers. Okay, uh, sir, I scored 112 out of 200. Um, I don't think you can get an A unless the paper is like insanely difficult. Then yeah, you might scrape off an A, otherwise you can't. So my concepts for each topic are very good, but the things, but the thing is algebra messes me up. Can you make a complete algebra playlist if you have already? Uh, so I have a few videos on algebra. They're scattered everywhere. Actually, no, I do have a playlist on algebra. You can check it out, okay? Oh yeah, actually they're irrational. Sorry, not rational. Ulta bol diya mene. They're actually irrational, my bad. Irrational numbers. Not rational, irrational. Rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as a form of integer, two integers, they are irrational. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, uh, now moving on. Thank you for pointing that out. I can see everyone has just exploded the chat box. Hey, anyway, thank you, nonetheless. Now question number seven. This is from May, June, 2004, paper one. Okay, let's see what this says. And by the way, I've attached this worksheet in the description. You guys can download it from there if you want, okay? So it says a pendulum of 105 centimeters suspended from O, it swings three degrees on either side. Okay, so three degrees on this side, three degrees on this side. You know how a pendulum is, right? So this is the, you can say the median position and it goes on the left and it goes on the right. Take, uh, taking pi to be 22 upon seven, calculate the length of the arc AP. So how do you calculate the arc length? Theta upon 360 multiplied by two pi r. So basically you get marks for remembering the formula over here, you know. So six upon 360 into two into pi, which is 22 upon seven into r, which is equal to what? Which is equal to 105 centimeter, okay? Why? Because that is what the radius is going to be. Okay, now this requires a lot of simplification. So we have six ones are six, six are, Tika. Now let's see what else I can simplify. So we have two ones are, two threes are, 
ठीक है लेट्स सी व्हाट एल्स आई कैन सिंपलीफाई सेवन वन्स आर सेवन वन्स आर सेवन एंड थ्री कैरी सो सेवन फाइव्स आर ओके एंड नाउ वी हैव थ्री वन्स आर एंड वी हैव थ्री फाइव्स आर ओके नाउ व्हाट एल्स इज लेफ्ट इज देयर एनीथिंग एल्स दैट आई कैन सिंपलीफाई नोप आई थिंक दैट्स अबाउट इट टू बाय आर so yeah there you go let's solve this so see what do we get 22 into 5 is equal to what 22 is into 5 is equal to 110 cm so there you go that's the answer uh sir so if i do one bad paper 30 degrees not 3 Yeah, so uh, it's okay. Let me go through your questions. Six upon three sixty into two pi r. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Uh, both papers have equal. Sir, if I do one bad paper, can I recover? Yeah. So if let's say one paper doesn't go that well, then you can recover. Okay. Given that you do exceptionally well in the other paper. Okay. given that you do exceptionally well in the other paper won't it be 60 degrees why would it be 60 degrees why would it be 60 degrees it's 3 degrees okay it's 3 degrees so it's not going to be 60 degrees okay Oh, acha. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Acha, that you're saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. It's going to be sixty degrees. Okay. So I made a calculation error again. Let me fix that. Six upon three sixty. Take it, take it. Into two into twenty-two upon seven into r, which is equal to one hundred five. Okay. So six ones are six sixties are. Okay. So that's what you guys are saying. Okay. So basically, the answer is not going to be hundred and ten. It's just going to be eleven centimeter. Okay. So two ones are two threes are seven ones are seven ones are seven seven three seven fives are. Three ones are and uh, three. Okay, two ones are, two thirties are, fifteen ones are, fifteen twos are. So it's going to be eleven centimeter. Okay, thank you. So simplification error. Yep, you're right. So the answer is eleven centimeter. Okay, my bad. Again, thank you for pointing that out. Okay, so here's question number eighteen. Let's see what this says. So this question says a base of a pyramid. <laughs> is a square with diagonals of length 6 cm the sloping faces are isosceles triangles with equal sides of length 7 cm the height of the pyramid is square root l calculate l okay now notice that height of the pyramid is what we have inside the pyramid okay so this is basically the height of the pyramid theek okay? hai and this is what we have to calculate okay and notice that all the lengths according to the question or the sloping faces are i so the base of the pyramid is a square of length 6 cm so that means ye 6 hogi ye 6 hogi ye 6 hogi ye 6 hogi theek hai and what about this this will now basically be equal to what this will basically be equal to 3 cm okay and according to the question that what you have are base the sloping faces are isosceles of are isosceles triangles with equal sides of 7 cm Okay now what does that mean that means k this is basically going to be equal to 7 as well this length is going to be equal to 7 cm okay, let me draw it with a different color yeah so this length is going to be equal to 7 cm and this length is going to be equal to 7 cm now the question is how can we calculate the height of the pyramid okay How can I calculate the height of the pyramid using this? ठीक है चलो I'll let you guys have a look at it and tell me how to solve this. Okay. Thank you. Yep, I just realized I hit forty-three thousand. अच्छा again. Okay, I'm really sorry. I just realized that it says square with diagonals length six centimeter. Okay, so basically it's the diagonal that's equal to six centimeter. So this is going to be equal to six centimeter. Again, my bad. 
Okay, now if this is six centimeter, that actually makes it easy. Okay, that actually makes it very easy. So basically, notice that this is the height. Okay, this is the triangle that we are going to consider. Okay, what I've just highlighted. Now, since this is the triangle that we are going to consider, what I've just highlighted. Now, notice that since it's a square, this is going to be three centimeter. Okay, okay, and what about the height of what about the length of the rectangle the length of the triangle that's going to be equal to seven centimeter okay according to the question the sloping faces are isosceles triangle with equal sides of length seven centimeter okay now what we have to calculate is the height okay now according to the question the height of the pyramid is square root l centimeter and that's what we have to calculate okay calculate karenge? square root of l squared plus three squared equals to what equals to seven squared so that means square root of L, if you square it, you will just have L plus 9 is equals to 49. So L equals to what? L is equals to 49 minus 9, which is equal to 40 centimeters. So that means the length is equal to what? The length is equal to 40 centimeters. And I'll explain this question again. So basically, the question says that the square has diagonal 6 centimeters. So that means this is 6 and this is 6. Now, if you're wondering where the 3 came from, remember, every time we make a diagonal in a square, the basis, the lens, the diagonals intersect at midpoint. Okay, so these two diagonals are intersecting at midpoint. If the diagonals are intersecting at midpoints, that means they're gonna be divided into three centimeter each. So ye three hai, to ye bhi three hai. Okay, and just like that, ye bhi three hoga, ye bhi three hoga. All the mare kisi kam kani hai. But you know, just so you guys know, these two are going to be three as well. Okay. Now here is three, here is the height, and here is seven. So three squared plus eight squared equals to seven squared. Why? By using Pythagoras theorem. And there you go. This gives us our answer. Tika. And that's it. That's the answer. Okay, next question. Now this one's fairly easy. Again, you get marks for remembering the formula. It says a block of wood is a cuboid 10 centimeter by 20 centimeter. Uh, 10 centimeter by 6 centimeter by 2 centimeter. Tika. Okay. So fine, we have to find out its volume. So remember how to calculate the volume of a uh, cuboid. It's length into width into height. So that's going to be equal to 10 into 6 into 2. So that's equal to 120. So there you go. The answer to the first part is 120. Again, let me make sure I haven't made a calculation error. Yep. So it's all good. Okay, then comes part B where we have to find out the surface area. Okay, remember to calculate, remember the formula to calculate the surface area is twice of length into width plus twice of length into height, plus twice of width into height. Okay, so two times of 10 into six, plus twice of six into two, okay, plus twice of two into 10, okay. Now this is gonna be 60, 60 into two is 120, 12, 12 into two is 24, and then you have 20, 20 into two is 40. So 40 plus 24 is 64, 64 plus 120 is 184 centimeter square. And this is going to be centimeter cube. Although you don't have to worry about the units. Okay, abnormally, your questions are as you're given the units. So you know, there's nothing to worry about. So there you go. That's it. That's your answer. Yeah, these are easy. I know, I know. So I haven't really arranged them in a difficulty. Uh, I haven't really arranged them as per their difficulty. Okay, I'm just solving all the questions from 20, 2003 onwards. Okay. Now here's question number 18. Now this is a difficult question. Again, just because I say it's difficult doesn't necessarily mean that all of you here should find it difficult. Okay, some of you might find it easy. So here's part A. Part A says, and it's part B that's difficult. Part A is pretty easy. Part A says, OAB is a sector of a circle with center O and radius eight centimeter. Write down an expression in terms of X and pi for the area of the sector OAB. Okay, so how do you calculate the area? It's pretty easy x upon 360 multiplied by pi into 8 into square okay so let's see we can how we can simplify this x upon 360 into 64 pi okay so we can simplify this using what using 8 i believe 8 8s are 64 8 4s are 32 4 carry 8 5s are 40 so here we have 8 upon 45 pi x as the answer 8 upon 45 pi x. Okay, now here comes part B. Part B says PQR is a semicircle of radius 4 centimeter. The area of the sector OAB is one third the area of the semicircle. 
Okay, so area of the sector, which is 8 upon 45 by x is one third the area of the semicircle. So that means one third of pi into 4 square upon 2. Okay, why pi into 4 square upon 2? Because like I said, it's one third. Okay, now let's do a bit of simplification over here. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change this 4 square to 16. Okay, so that's equal to 16. Okay, now let's cross out the pi's. 8 1's are 8 2's are. See, okay. This 2 and this 2 gets cancelled out. All right, so here's what we're looking at. We're looking at x upon 45 equals to 1 upon 3. Cross multiply. x equals to 45 upon 3. So what's x equal to? x is equals to 15 centimeter. And there you go. That's your answer. Yes, uh, I have shared a link of this worksheet in the description so you guys can check it out there. So after getting consistently good marks and four or five pass papers, should we do more? Yeah, you should keep on doing more. You should, shouldn't stop. Okay. Sir, should we do math pass paper every day? Yeah, of course, you should be doing pass papers every day. Okay. Okay, now. Here's question number 19. Let's see what this says. Now, this is a challenging question. So it says here, let's see how many marks this is. Yeah. A, B, C, D is a pyramid. A, B, C, D, E, in fact, is a pyramid. Okay. The base B, C, D, E is a square of sides 10 centimeter. Okay. Let's highlight that. The sloping faces are isosceles triangles. Okay. So the sloping faces are is isosceles triangles. You can see all the lengths that are equal to 13 centimeter. Calculate the area of the sloping face A, B, C. Okay. area So how can I calculate the area? So first of all, it's always a good idea to draw it separately. Okay. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw it separately. So here's 10, here's 13, and here's 13 as well. Okay. Now how do you calculate the area of any triangle? Half into base into height. Okay. So that means I need to know what the height of this triangle is going to be. Now, when I drop, drop a perpendicular, because it's an isosceles triangle, what's going to happen is, is that the base is going to get divided by two. So we'll have five centimeter on both sides and the height, we can call that H. Okay. Now we can find out the height using Pythagoras theorem. So H squared plus five squared equals to 13 squared. So that means H squared plus 25 is equals to 169, which means H squared equals to 144, which means H is equals to 12 centimeter. Okay. Now that you have the height, you can now calculate the area. Guess it? Half into base into height. So half into 10 into 12 is 120 upon 2, which is equal to 60. So there you go. 60 centimeters squared is your answer. Okay. Then it says the pyramid A, B, C, D, E is joined to an identical pyramid B, C, D, E, F to form the solid A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. Calculate the surface area of the solid. Now, in order to calculate the surface area, here's what you should do. Imagine that you're holding this object in your hand, okay? Now, if you're holding this object in your hand, let me ask you guys a question. How many surfaces do you think you'll be able to touch? Okay, and this is one solid. It's not like you're holding two separate pyramids. You're holding this entire solid in your hand. So while you're holding this, how many surfaces do you think you'll able, you're, you will be able to touch? So how many YouTube tutorials it took to learn the spinning technique? Okay, I've been doing this since grade eight. And I learned this through um, drumsticks, so grade eight, mein, we used to have a drum music teacher who used to play the drums. So he used to do that, which I found pretty cool. And I started doing it myself and I learned it too. Although I never learned how to play the drums, but this is the one thing I learned <laughs> from the teacher. Uh, seven plus one. Seven plus one. Why seven plus one? Why not eight? Yeah, eight. Say yeah. So basically, four triangles on both of both the pyramids. Okay. So four triangles each. All right. A big triangle ka area That's 120. So altogether we'll have eight triangles. Okay. So 120 
is nahi, 120 nahi, in fact 60 hai, sorry so 60 ko hum kisse multiply kar denge 60 ko multiply kar denge 8 theek hai so what 60 times 8 60 times 8 is equals to 480 so there you go 480 centimeter square and that's it that's your answer so please show some respect the apple pencils but uh may i say consider disrespectful cheese car <laughs> Is there any possibility of February March question or concepts of the question being repeated? No, I mean, you can't say for sure. Okay. Achha, so basically, there's part two of this question as well, which I'm going to skip. Pele is there any questions out there where they would ask you to find out the plane symmetry? Okay. Now they don't anymore, so I'm going to skip that. Okay. Now here's a question again, fairly easy. Let's just quickly sprint through it. Okay. So it says a cuboid is shown in the diagram. The volume of the cuboid is 90,000, find the height. Okay, so we know that the volume is equals to length into width into height. So 60 into 50 into H is equal to 90,000. All right, so cross out the zeros. Okay, so 30 H is equals to 900. H is equals to what? H is equals to 30. There you go, that's it, that's your answer. Okay, Achha, this question also I'm going to skip because this is a more of a similar shapes question, not a mensuration question. I don't know why it's been added over here. Okay, so let's do this question. This is an interesting question. So it says here in the diagram, ABCD is a diameter of the circle center P. AB is equals to BC, which is equal to CD, which is equal to 2x centimeter. Okay, find an expression in terms of x and pi for the circumference of the circle. Okay, so we're talking about the entire circle. All right, that shouldn't be a problem. So when we're talking about the entire circle, the radius of the entire circle is going to be equal to 2x plus x. Now notice that yx hoga, yx hoga. So the radius of the entire circle is going to be 3x. Okay, so how will I find out the circumference of the entire circle? That's going to be 2 pi r, which means 2 pi into 3x, which is equal to 6 pi x. And there you go, 6 pi x is your answer. Okay, so that's, that was pretty easy. Let's see part B. Now, a lot of times, you know, we shape the shape because it's complicated, it's weird, we, we're not able to, you know, give a name to the shaded region. But if you just sort of look at the question, get yourself step by step familiar with it, it's not that difficult. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that no question is difficult. There are obviously some difficult questions, but this is the approach that you should have. Then it says the perimeter of the shaded region consists of two semicircles. All right. So you have two semicircles whose diameters are AB and CD. Okay. And two semicircles whose diameters are AC and BD. So yeah. Now be careful. The question here is asking you to find an expression in terms of X for the area of the shaded region. Okay. So what we need to find out is basically area of the shaded region. Now, if I can just find out the area of one shaded region, okay, and then simply multiply it by two, that should be good enough, right? Okay, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find out the area of one shaded region. Kese? Kese. So here we have a semicircle, right? Now this semicircle, has radius what has radius to be equal to 2x centimeter okay the semicircle of this the radius of this semicircle is equal to 2x okay how do i know that the question says so okay the question says the perimeter of the shaded region consists of two semicircles whose diameters are a b and c d okay and two semicircles whose diameters are a c and b d so that means this is a semicircle okay this ka diameter AC hai, which means the radius is going to be 2x, half of 4x, okay? Now, so let's find out the area of shaded region, okay? I'm finding out the area of shaded region. Area of shaded region. So basically, we'll calculate the area of the bigger circle, which means we will do pi into 2x square upon 2, bigger semicircle, minus the area of the smaller semicircle, which means pi x square upon 2. Okay, and my suggestion is don't simplify this. Okay, so this becomes 4 x square, 4 pi x square. So let's write it as 4 pi x square upon 2. Okay, minus pi x square upon 2. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by 2. 
Okay, why multiply by 2? Because we have exactly the same on the other side as well. Okay, so what is it? If I add this, then I add this, then I add this, then I add this, then let's just find 1 and times it by 2. Okay, so 4 pi x square minus pi x square is equal to 3 pi x square divided by 2 and then we're going to multiply it by 2. So this 2 and this 2 gets cancelled out and now you have 3 pi x square as your final answer. So there you go, that's your answer. Now we don't have to find perimeter. We have to. That's that's the strange part. It's it tells us about the perimeter, but it's talking about. It's asking us to find out the area actually. Uh, so how many past papers should we solve for maths P one? Again, I've made so many videos on this. Ideally, th there's no golden number. Okay, there's no magic number if that's what you're looking for. Enough. After if uh, if after a certain point, you let's say. Let's say if you reach a point where you can say, okay, you're getting a good score and you're getting a good score consistently, that's good enough. Okay? No, it's not necessary to do 20 years. 20 years of past papers, so it's not necessary to do any work. There's a lot of syllabus. Bhi. Khair, kafi saara nahi, but yeah, syllabus has changed, so I wouldn't suggest that you solve 20 years. Just do 5 years, that's good enough. Okay? From 2022 to 2018, and then you can do the variance if you're done with the first 5 years. Okay? All right, so here's a question. Let's see what it says. Why are we dividing by two? We're dividing by two because it's a semicircle. And why are we multiplying it by two? We're multiplying it by two because we have exactly the, the we have exactly the same on the other side as well. Okay, let me see if I can do sets and Venn diagram as well. Okay, I've read your message. Let me see if I can do that. Okay. All right. Here's question number seven. Let's see what question seven says. The diagram shows a solid cuboid with base 10 centimeter by x centimeter. The height of the cuboid is 10 centimeter by 6 centimeter. The height of the cuboid is x centimeter. Find an expression in terms of x for the total surface area of the cuboid. Okay, so that shouldn't be difficult. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply all the sides together and times it by 2. So 10 into 6 times 2 because we have one at the bottom, one at the top. Okay, just make sure that the question doesn't say anywhere that it's open from the top or something like that. Okay, then twice of 6 into x. Okay, then twice of 10 into x. Okay, so 10 into 6 is 60, 60 into 2 is 120. Okay, and then you have 6 into 2, that's 12x plus. 20x. So 20x plus 12x is 32x plus 120. So there you go. 32x plus 120 is your final answer. Okay. Then it says the total surface area of the cuboid is 376. So that means 32x plus 120 equals to 376. Now you have to solve this equation. 32x is equals to 376 minus 120. So let's figure that out. 6, 5, 1. 6, yeah, 651. So 32x is equals to 156. So we can simplify this starting from 8. 8 4s are, okay. 8 1s are, and 8 1s are 8. Kabacha? Let's see. No, wait. It's going to be 256. Sorry. Not 156. It's going to be 256. So 256 divided by 8 karte. So 8 3s are, 1 carry 32 x is equals to 32 divided by 4 which means it's equal to 8 centimeter and there you go that's your answer okay now let's do a difficult question let's do this this is 3d uh, 3d mensuration and we're dealing with the prism over here okay now so let's see what this says it says the diagram shows a solid prism of length 20 centimeter. The cross section ABCD is a trapezium. Okay. AB is equals to 2 centimeter. All right. And then BC is equals to 5 centimeter. CD is equals to 6 centimeter. DA equals to 3 centimeter. Okay. ADC equals to 90 centimeter. Calculate the area of the trapezium. Okay. So how do you calculate the area of trapezium? It's half into sum of parallel sides. Into the height. Okay. So half into sum of parallel sides comes up 6 plus 2 into the height, which is equal to what? Which is equal to 3. So 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 upon 2 is what? 9. And 9 into 3 is, uh, sorry, 8 upon 2 is 4. 4 into 3 is 
12 1 2 4 so there you go 12 centimeters square Tika. pretty easy yes the first part i understand is pretty easy Tika. Achha. let's do part b where it's asking us to calculate the total surface area of the prism okay and this is a two mark question now this also is pretty easy i'm not saying that this is difficult Tika. given that you know the formula if you don't know the formula and I will not recommend that you find out the area of all the faces and then add it up, okay? Although that is a way to do it, but if you may remember the formula, that'll make life easy. So remember, the total surface area of a prism is equal to this. It's equal to 2C plus PL, okay? Where C is what? C is basically the area of cross-section, okay? P is what? P is the perimeter of cross-section. And L is what? L is the length of the prism okay formula yaad rakho this will save a lot of time so we've already worked out the area of cross section right we've already worked that out to be 12 so 12 times 2 that's 24 okay now let's find out the perimeter of the cross section which means 3 plus 6 plus 5 plus 2 okay 3 plus 6 plus 5 plus 2 and this gets multiplied by the length of the cross section which is equal to what which is equal to 20 so 12 into 2 is 24. Let's figure this out. 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 plus 5 is 14. 14 plus 2 is 16. So 16 into 20. 16 into 20 is 320. So 320 plus 24, which is equal to what? Which is equal to 344 centimeters square. And there you go. That's your answer. Like I said, I will not recommend that you break the area. So how important is sleep for math? Very important. You need a fully functioning brain for which you have to make sure that you get good sleep, basically. Okay. All right. So here's a question. So now I'd like you guys to solve this question. I'll give you what? Five minutes? Not five minutes, actually. Two minutes should be enough. Okay. Question asana, but there are a lot of things that you might not pay attention to due to which you may get the final answer wrong. Yes, this formula works for any prism there is. Any prism. Sir, do you have any tips for someone whose worst subject is maths? So irrespective of what you're, how good or how bad you are in math, at this point, if there's anything you should be doing, you should be solving past papers, okay? And by the way, I solved I've solved the February, March 2023 past paper of IGCSE, okay? And uh, yesterday only I solved paper 12, no, not paper 12, paper 22 of October, November 2022, okay? So, you know, just watch those, okay, and solve alongside. That's what I would recommend. Area of square minus area of circle, haan, theek hai, zahre area of square minus area of circle, hi hai, but the question is, what's the answer? I want the answer from you guys. So I'll write that down. Area of square minus area of circle. Okay. 64 minus 9 pi. Let's see. 64A will be the area of square. Yep, nothing wrong with that. Minus pi into 3 square. Yep, good job. So 64 minus 9 pi it is. There you go. That's it. That's your answer. Okay. Now, here's a question which I skipped, and I think we should do this question. Okay. Now, I'm pretty sure by looking at this question, you guys are probably freaking out. But don't. Okay. Don't freak out. It's not as difficult as you might think. Yeah. Okay, let's see what it says. So it says here, the diagram shows a window made up of a large semicircle, okay, and a rectangle. All right. The large semicircle has four identical sections. So basically, keep having a look at the diagram and keep getting yourself familiar with the question. Okay, don't try and absorb everything at once. So you're not going to be able to do that. So this is the semicircle that the question is talking about. Okay, when the question says it's made up of a large semicircle, 
this is what the question is talking about and when the question says it's made of a re rectangle this is what the question is talking about okay so here you have your window now this window is divided into four identical sections that means a b c d and e are identical not according to me according to the question and a small semicircle e okay the rectangle has three identical square sections f g h f g h so this rectangle is divided into three identical squares the side of each square is 20 centimeter okay then it says calculate the area of the whole window okay now agar ek dafa padh ke samajh nahi aaya just read it again keep on reading it till you don't understand it okay so i'm going to read it again for you guys so this window is divided into a large semicircle here's the semicircle that you see me highlighting in red okay and a rectangle so here is the rectangle which you can see i'm highlighting in blue okay and what we need to find out is the area of the whole window okay and not only that the question categorically tells us that a b c d are identical e is a semicircle f g h are squares of length 20 cm each okay acha so let's start by calculating the area of rectangle okay area of rectangle in fact let's make an equation first area of rectangle plus the area of semi circle okay that's how we're going to find out the total area of the window okay equals to what equals to total area of window okay so area of rectangle so now if the square has side 20 so 20 plus 20 plus 20 is going to be equal to what is going to be 60 so 20 times 60 will give us the area of F, G, and H. Okay. Now, if I calculate the area of the semicircle, now be careful. How will I calculate the area of the semicircle? It's the radius of the semicircle is going to be what? It's going to be half of 60. That means it's going to be 30. Okay. And because, oops, sorry. Because it's a semicircle, don't forget to divide it by 2. So plus pi into 30 squared and like i said because it's a semicircle don't forget to divide it by 2 so 20 into 60 is 1200 okay 30 squared is 900 so 900 upon 2 pi which you can further simplify and write it as 1200 plus 455 and there you go that's your answer easy okay now dekhne mein question kitna bayanak lag raha tha but when we read it again and again got familiar with it you know, it became a lot easier. Okay, then comes part B. Part B says, the perimeter of section B. Okay. How will I calculate the perimeter of section B? So, question for you guys. How to calculate the perimeter of section B? And how many marks is this? It's three marks. That means it requires a decent amount of working. Achha, I'm just going to delete this and bring this over here. Okay, now. How did I get 30? Okay, I got 30 by dividing 60 by half. Look, this is 60. 60 circle ka diameter. Hoga. Okay, 60 will be the diameter of the circle. So if you divide 60 by half, if not divide 60 by half, if you divide 60 by two, that's when you get 30. Advanced streams, inshallah, inshallah, starting from tomorrow. Okay. Sir, when you take or divide by four, karein, you will get one angle. Do I really have to find out the angle? I don't think we have to find out the angle. There's no need to find out the angle. Okay. So chalo ek kaam karte This is what we want, right? This is what we want. So here's what I'll do. First of all, let's start with these two lengths. Okay. So these two lengths are going to be what? These two lengths are going to be 20 each. So 20 plus 20, which is equal to 40. Now, if you're wondering why, I'll explain. So notice the question said that A, B, C, and D are identical. So that means this is going to be 20. This is going to be 20. This is going to be 20. And this is going to be 20. Okay. Achha. Now, how will I calculate the arc length? No, we will not calculate the arc length by making a quadrant, okay? No, that's not a good idea. The way to calculate the arc length is to actually calculate the arc length of the semicircle or to calculate the circumference of the semicircle and then divide it by four, okay? 
not area of semicircle, the circumference of the semicircle. So how do you calculate the circumference of the semicircle? It's going to be 2 pi r. So that means 2 pi r upon 2. Why? Because it's a semicircle. And then we're going to divide it by 4 as well. Okay. So this 2 and this 2 gets cancelled out. And now we have 30 pi upon 4, which is equal to what? Which is equal to 4 ones or shall I come then? Let's write it in fraction form. 15 upon 2. So this is equal to 15 upon 2 pi. Okay. So 15 upon 2 pi is equal to what? Or you can write it as 7.5. Yeah, that's up to you. So it's basically equal to this. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate this. And how will I calculate this? This is basically equal to one fourth of the semicircle of the smaller semicircle. Okay. Now the question is, what will be the radius of the smaller semicircle? It's going to be 10. Why 10? Because the diameter is 20, so the radius is going to be 10. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. 2 pi r upon 2, because it's a semicircle. Okay. And then we're going to divide it by 4. So this 2 and this 2 gets cancelled out. And now we're looking at 10 pi upon 4, which is equal to what? Which is equal to 5 upon 2 pi. Okay. And now what we have to do is we have to find the total. See, okay. So we can find the total by simply adding everything up. So 40 plus 15 upon 2 pi plus 7 upon, sorry, not 7, 5 upon 2 pi. So 15 pi plus, uh, plus 5 pi is 20 pi, 20 pi upon 2 is 10. So 40 plus 10 pi is the final answer. There you go. 40 plus 10 pi. That's it. That's your answer. Achha, for those of you who are saying that we do sector, bana ke kar lete, I think you can do that as well. One, two, yeah, we could have done that as well. I just realized. Three, four, five. Yeah, so you could have done that. Ultimately, why cheese jati? You would calculate the area of uh, the arc length of a circle, okay? And then you would multiply it by 45 upon 360, and 45 upon 360 is one fourth. So you could have done that as well. If that's what you thought, if that's what you thought about doing, then that's great. Go ahead, you will get the right answer. Okay. Okay. Now moving on to the next question. Again, let me find out a difficult question, a more challenging question. Okay, let's do this. 3D mensuration again. So this question says, you have three spheres, each of radius 2a centimeter, CK, are placed inside a cylinder of radius 3a and height 12a centimeter. Okay. Water is poured into the cylinder to fill it completely. The volume of water is k pi a cube. Find the value of k. Okay. So basically, let's see what do we have inside the cylinder. Okay. So inside the cylinder, the total volume, okay, the cylinder is filled by two things basically. The total volume of cylinder is basically equal to three spheres, okay, and water. That is what makes up the total volume of the cylinder. Okay, not according to me, but according to the question. Okay. Now, if I want to calculate the total volume of the cylinder, how do I do that? Pi r square into h okay pi r square h the volume of the cylinder this is equal to three times the volume of the spheres okay now what would be the volume of sphere four upon three into pi into r which according to the question is 2a and then don't forget to cube it okay don't end up squaring it don't forget to cube it plus the water which is equal to k pi a cube okay and remember ultimately you have to do what you have to find out the value of k okay Achha. Now, let's see what happens. So 3a squared is 9a squared. 9 multiplied by 12 is what? 108. Okay. So here we have 108 pi a cubed. Okay. Bohut aapne carefully isko simplify karna. Okay. Let me double check because I know I have a tendency of making silly errors. So I'm just going to double check. 9 into 12 is 108. So 108 pi a cubed. Okay. Then this and this gets cancelled out. Okay. 2 cube is 8. 
So we'll have 8a cube again. When you multiply it by 4, so that's going to be 32. So 32 pi a cubed plus k pi a cubed. Now notice that we have pi everywhere. So might as well cancel pi from everywhere. Okay, so cross this out, cross this out, cross this out. It's like taking pi common and crossing it out. Okay, and now here's what we have. We have 108 a cubed which is equal to 32 a cube plus k a cube. And if you were thinking that we could have crossed out a cube as well, then that's perfectly all right. In fact, that's what we're going to do now, okay? So 108 a cube minus 32 a cubed equals to what? Equals to k a cubed. Now what's 108 minus 32? That's equal to 76. So k a cubed equals to 76 a cubed. What happens next? A cube and A cube gets cancelled out. And now you have the value of K, which is equal to what? Which is equal to 76. So there you go. That's it. That's your answer. Now remember one thing. That if you have a solid, which consists of two things. Another solid, there's another solid inside of it. Okay, and then there is something that's poured to fill it up. Then the total contents make up the volume of that solid. So in this case, the volume of the sphere plus the volume of water will make up the volume of the cylinder. Okay, so there you go. Uh, yes, I will be doing IGCSE streams. Don't worry about it. Okay, I've already streamed March 23 papers and I've streamed one paper, uh, paper 22 of October, November. So don't worry, they're lined up. Achha, sir, this time, what are your expectations about math? Why do you guys ask me this question? So, um, I think it's going to be difficult. I think it's going to be insanely difficult. Specimen papers. Now, there are no specimen papers. Specimen papers are when the syllabus change. Hota hai. Specimen papers are 24, 2025. Ke liye aaya. Okay? So don't solve that. That's because the syllabus is changing. That's why they've received, they've released the specimen paper. So you cancel, kaise ho ga? why not? It's like taking common and crossing it out. Okay. Achha, I'm just joking. Okay. <laughs> I have no reason to back up what I just said. Okay. And that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Okay. कोई भी अगर इस टाइम पे आपको अपना पेपर की डिफिकल्टी लेवल के बारे में बता रहा है तो आपका आपको सिर्फ सिर्फ अपना ओपिनियन दे रहा है ठीक है इट इज नो सब्सटेंशियल एविडेंस टू बैक अप व्हाट आई जस्ट सेड अह यस डिफरेंशिएशन इंटीग्रेशन ओके लेट मी ट्राई लुक प्रिपेयर फॉर द वर्स्ट ओके द बेस्ट एडवाइस दैट आई कैन गिव यू गाइस इज प्रिपेयर फॉर द वर्स्ट and you know, having a difficult paper can work in your favor. That means the threshold is going to be low. I got an A in math. Now you probably ask, A star kyun nahi aaya? Our time pe A star nahi hota tha. I gave the exams in 2010, and I think A star uh, came after 2010. All right, so let's do this question. Okay, and then. There are a couple more questions which I'd like to solve. You know, I'd like to solve this question, yet an interesting sawale, and this question also, and this question as well. Okay, let's see. Let's keep solving them. Okay. So this says a thin piece of wire is shaped into a figure five as shown. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I am joking. I am genuinely joking. Okay. The shape has two straight sections of length 5.25 centimeter and 4.8 centimeter. The curved part is the arc of the major sector of a circle, radius 3 centimeter, and the angle the angle of the major sector is 280 degrees. But the thing is, again, if you just try and get to the bottom of this, it becomes easier. Okay. If you just sort of break this question down, it becomes a whole lot easier. Okay. So let's start with the straight lengths, 5.25 and 4.8, okay? So all we have to do is we have to find out the perimeter, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do 5.25 plus 4.8, okay? So if you're like me, who is not too confident about his mental maths, then I'd suggest you do it like this, okay? Five plus zero is five, you know, like good students. 
2 plus 8 is 10, 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10. So 10.05, okay? So that means whatever it's going to be, it's going to be 10.05 plus something, okay? Now let's find out this curved length, okay? So how will I find out this curved length? We're going to have to use the arc length formula, which means 280 upon 360 multiplied by 2 pi into 3. Now, again, this will require a bit of simplification, okay? And leave it in fraction form if you have to. So first, we cross out the 0. 3 ones are 3. 3 twelves are 36, okay? 2 ones are 2. 2 six are 12. 2 threes are 6. 2 fourteens are 28. So ultimately, we're left with 14 upon 3 pi. Okay, so there you go. 10.05 plus 14 upon 3 pi is your answer. Now, according to the question, your answer should have been A plus B pi. Okay. So, do we have the value of A? Yes, we do. 10.05. Do you have the value of B? Yes, we do. 14 upon 3. Okay, no need to write pi because B is the coefficient. Okay. Uh, favorite subject except for math? Um, hmm, good question. I think I liked physics. Yeah, I liked physics. I never liked chemistry though. <laughs> Hated chemistry. Kabi samaj nahi chemistry. Khair, I'm not saying hey, it's difficult. I'm just giving my opinion. Okay. Okay. So here's question number twenty-four. Let's see what this is. So this question says we have a volume of a cone which is one upon three pi r square h. The curved surface area of a cone is pi r l. The volume of a sphere is so and so. E question be mushkila by the way. This is from May June two thousand fifteen. And what do we have to do? A solid is formed from a hemisphere of radius r centimeter fixed to a cone of radius r centimeter and height h centimeter. The volume of the hemisphere is one third the volume of the solid. Okay, let's see. Uh, Maz, I have solved your question. Okay, I just need to share the picture of it. I'll share it with you. Okay, don't worry about it. I've read your message. I'll share it with you. So find h in terms of r. Okay, so basically, the key to solving this question is this. The volume of the hemisphere is one third the volume of the solid. Okay. This is the key to solving this question. Okay. Now, how do we do this? First of all, write it in words. Okay. Uh, what's written in words, write, it, write an equation out of it. Okay. Translate this from English to math. One third of the volume of the hemisphere, sorry, the volume of the hemisphere actually, the volume of the hemisphere is equal to one third the volume of the solid. One third volume of the solid. Now what exactly does the solid consist of? The solid consists of a cone plus the hemisphere. Okay. What will happen with this? I will So basically, when you make an equation, it will be easier for you. How will it be? You can cross multiply it now. So you have three times the hemisphere. That means three times the volume of the hemisphere is equal to the volume of the cone plus the hemisphere. And then if you take this hemisphere over to the other side, that means three into HS minus HS equals to cone, which basically means that two times the hemisphere or two times the volume of the hemisphere is equal to the volume of the cone, okay? So, is statement ki madad se humne kya figure out kar liya? That two times the volume of Hemisphere equals to volume of cone. Okay, that's what we've been able to figure out with the help of this. Okay, so all I've done is I've just translated it from English to math. The volume of the hemisphere is one third the volume of the solid. The solid consists of a cone, okay, and a hemisphere. So that means the volume of the hemisphere is one third the volume of the solid. Okay, and now cross multiply. So three times the volume of the hemisphere is equals to cone plus the volume of the hemisphere, which means two times the volume of the hemisphere equals to the volume of the cone. Okay, now, so that's what we're going to do now. We're just going to replace the formula for volume. So two times the volume of the hemisphere, ka matlab, two into two upon three pi r cube. Okay, that's what the volume of a hemisphere equal to. Okay is equal to the volume of a cone, which means one upon three pi r square h. And notice what we have to do is we have to find out h in terms of r, okay? So we cross out this three from this three, we cross out the pi and pi, okay? So two into two is what? Two into two is four. So four r cube 
equals to r square h make h the subject so you have 4 r cube upon r square so the r square gets cancelled and the 3 from r cube gets cancelled and now the height equals to what the height equals to 4 r okay now take a good look at what i've done let me know if you have any questions chemistry can shut down the mind easily yeah that's so basically so i uh, i didn't have much of a problem with o level chemistry i basically had a problem with a level chemistry i could never wrap my head around a level chemistry okay so if you guys find o level chemistry difficult then wait till you get to a levels yeah that's the thing about mensuration it's about understanding the question once you understand the question it's pretty easy that's the thing about pretty much everything there is fair anyway now this was the difficult part now the next two parts are fairly easy the question says the slant height of the cone can be written as r under root k where k is an integer okay so the slant height l can be written as r under root k okay why is that that's because we have the height in terms of h uh wait a minute we have the height in terms of r so this is r this is 4r and this is the slant height so l squared equals to 4r squared okay 4r whole squared plus r squared so that means l squared equals to 17 r squared and now if you take the square root on both sides so l is equals to root 17 r squared now r squared is something you can take the square root of so square root of r squared is r and the 17 remains intact so k is equals to what k is equals to 17 according to the question the slant height is equals to r under root k so k equals to 17 okay i'm not solving a yearly past paper i'm solving paper one mensuration questions okay and this is a question from may june 2015 okay now here's part c part c is find an expression in terms of r and pi for the total surface area of the solid okay now as always imagine that you're holding this object in your hand now if you're holding this object in your hand how many surfaces how many unique surfaces you think you can touch altogether okay imagine you're holding this in your hand surfaces feel so i usually stream around 10 and 11 pm okay 9 or 10 but coming uh, from the coming days inshallah i will be streaming twice or three times a day maths ad maths and as math so i usually announce on my instagram okay instagram for make then announce what i'm streaming okay. two yes so the answer is correct i will be able to touch two different surfaces okay now what will they be one the curved surface area okay 10 pakistan time yes 10 pm pakistan time which is gmt plus 5 okay so what is the surface area of a hemisphere it's 2 pi r square okay and then you have the curved surface area of a cone which is pi r l okay so 2 pi r square 2 pi r square plus pi r l now the question has already made you do all the hard work so pi r l is basically equal to what r under root 17 and there you go you can leave it like this if you want or you can simplify it okay so this becomes what this becomes the following 2 pi r square plus pi r square under root 17 and if you want you can take pi along with r square common but that's entirely up to you if you do it that's great if you don't do it that's still all right okay do i do this for fun or have a salary okay what do you think why don't you answer that question yes i am from karachi okay so here's question number 14 let's see what this is this is october november 2014 paper 12. okay so you'll find questions like these a lot where a cone is opened up and turned into a sector not just in paper one but you'll find in paper two now during this process remember whenever you cut open one object and form another okay whenever you cut open one object and make another sub uh, object okay and if it's a if it's a 3d object to a 2d object okay so i'll repeat what i said in fact i'll just write it down 
if you cut open one object to form a 2D shape, okay, if you cut open one 3D object to form a 2D shape, what remains the same? The blank remains the same. Okay, why don't you guys answer that? If you cut open a 3D object and make a 2D object out of it, what is the one thing that does not change? No, I won't be doing A-level this year. Not P3. AS, yes, but P3, no. The area. Good job. So remember, the surface area remains the same. Okay. And if you melt one object, okay, and make another, what remains the same? The volume remains the same. So if you melt like a bigger sphere and form multiple smaller spheres, then in that case, the volume remains the same. Okay. Okay. Now, another thing to understand is that every time basically you cut open an object, cut open a cone, okay? Now let's understand what happens to the slant height, okay? So let's understand what happens to the slant height, okay? Through this app. So here's a cone. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to ignore this circle here, okay? So just ignore the circle, okay? Now, notice what happens to the slant height of the cone, okay? So here's a cone, okay? Here you can see is the slant height with, let's say there's a very small opening, okay? So you can see that this is the slant height. Now, notice what happens. As soon as I turn it into a sector, notice that the slant height turns into what? The slant height turns into the radius of the sector, okay? So there you go. The slant height becomes the radius of the sector. So let's write that down. R is equals to what? R is equals to 10 centimeter. Okay, so R equals to 10 centimeter. Okay. Then we have to calculate X. Now X will be calculated through the help of area, okay? So area of sector, area of sector equals to the curved surface area of cone. Okay, so let's calculate the area of sector. X upon 360 into pi into 10 squared. Okay, and that's gonna be equal to the curved surface area of a cone, which means pi R L. So we cross out the pi. Okay, you can cross out the square from 10 squared and you can cross out this 10 altogether. Okay, and now you can cross out this 10, the zero of the 10 and the zero of 360, okay. And then all you have to do now is just cross multiply. And if you cross multiply correctly, you will get six into 36, which means six cube, which is equal to two one six. So there you go. You have two one six as your answer. Okay. Uh, so this is an app, it's called Shapes. Okay, it's an app, it's called Shapes. Yes, it is two one six. Okay, now let's do this question. Let's see what this question says. So this question says, the diagram shows a scoop used for measuring washing powder. Okay. The scoop is a prism. Its cross section is a trapezium. All right. It's called shapes, Vita. It's called shapes right here. Okay. And I don't know if they have this, uh, if, if it's available on Android, but on iOS, definitely. It's shapes, again. Okay. okay, show that the volume of the skew scoop is 180. Okay, so let's read this again. The trapezium is the cross section which has height four centimeter and sides of length seven centimeter and 11 centimeter. Okay, so let's see what I can do here. If I wanna calculate the volume, it's gonna be area of cross section multiplied by height. So let's write that down. Area of cross section multiplied by the length actually. Okay, in order to calculate the volume of the prism. Take care. Okay, so area of cross section basically means area of trapezium. So half into sum of parallel sides, that means half into 11 plus seven into four. So that's the area of trapezium. 
multiplied by the length, which is equal to 5. Take care. So let's work this out. 2 1s are, 2 2s are. 11 plus 7 is 18. Okay, 18 times 2 is 36. 36 times 5 is equals to 180. So there you go. This was a show question, and we've successfully shown that the volume is, in fact, equal to 180. Okay. Then it says, a scoop used in industry is geometrically similar to the scoop above. Okay, it has a volume of 22.5 liters. So whenever you see geometrically similar and it's talking about volume, immediately write this down. L1 upon L2, the whole thing cubed. Okay, and the volume is in 22.5 liters. So one liter, remember, is equals to a thousand centimeter cube. Okay, which means 22.5 will actually be equal to 22,500 centimeter cube. Okay, now what is the volume of our scoop, this little scoop here? That's uh, 180. What is the volume of the industrial scoop? 22,500. Okay. Why is trapezium the cross section area? That's because it says so. Its cross section is a trapezium. Okay. And why not take the length of the trapezium? That's because it says so. The trapezium has height 4 centimeter. And 5 that you're looking at, 5 is basically the height of the, you can say it's the length of the prism. Okay. Okay, now, 180 upon 22,500 is equal to what? Is equals to L1 upon L2, the whole thing, cubed. Okay? Now, notice that we have L1 and L2. Okay, In fact, we don't have L2, we have L1. We have the, we have the height of this scoop, which is equal to what? Which is equal to 4. Okay, so that's what we're going to write over here. That's 4. Now, what about the other height? We don't have that, so we'll call it L2. Okay, we can call it H2 as well. H2 kilo, L2 kilo makes no difference. Okay. All right, now we're going to simplify. So let's simplify 180 and 22,500. So we cross out the zeros, first of all. Okay. Then we can simplify using the table of... Hmm, let me think. We can simplify using the table of 9. So 9 twos are... Okay. 9 twos are 18. Okay. 9 fives are 45 and 0 as it is. And then you can simplify using 2 again, 1 upon 125. Okay, so here's what we have now. We have 1 upon 125, which is equal to 4 upon H2 whole cube. Now, because it's a paper 1 question, that means there has to be an easier way. Uh, probability, are you talking about IGCSC? Then, I don't know. I'll try and do it, but I'll most I'll be more concentrating more on yearly past papers. Okay. Achha, why are we taking the length as why aren't we taking the length as 5? Okay, so the reason why we're not taking the length as 5 is because we're asked to calculate the height of the industrial scoop. Okay, so we'll take the height of this scoop as well. Okay, the height is not 5. Okay, the width is 5. The width of the scoop is 5. Okay, now let me address this issue. This problem is when you don't truly understand the formula of prism. Okay, now I know a lot of you have memorized a base area times height okay but that's not the formula that i recommend there's nothing wrong with that given that you fully understand what that question is saying okay the formula that i will recommend instead is that area of cross section multiplied by length okay why area of cross section multiplied by length so that you know exactly what to find the area of and what exactly is the length length is basically the distance between the two cross sections okay or you can say distance between the two identical sides what does cross section mean okay cross section ke liye aap kaam kare. prisms pe i have a video you can watch that so you'll be able to understand it okay i can't explain it so quickly cross section you can say are basically the identical faces that you have on two sides that's what a cross section is okay okay now coming back so because it's a paper one question, that means there has to be an easier way to solve it. The calculations, obviously the question won't ask you to calculate the cube root of something that's not a perfect cube. Okay, so we'll take the cube root on both sides. So that's gonna be equal to one upon five, which is equal to four upon H2. And now if you cross multiply, you have four into five, which is equal to what? Which is equal to 20 centimeter. Okay, now there you go, that's your answer. Now please note that height hum 5 kyun nahi le rahe? height hum 5 is still nahi le rahe? because ye prism ki length hai, hai? 
distance. Or you can say that this is the perpendicular distance across the two cross sections, across the two trapeziums. What we need to calculate is the height. Okay. If you read the question, the question says that the width of the scoop is 5 cm. Okay. And the trapezium has height 4 cm. So that is why we're taking 4 cm and not 5 cm. And what do we have to calculate over here? We have to calculate the height of the industrial scoop. Okay, like I said, this problem is when they have the formula prism ka formula yaad ki hai, base area into height. Again, there's nothing wrong with that given that you understand the difference. There are no identical faces here. Okay, of course there are identical faces because the question says that it's a prism. That means whatever you have right in front, you'll have exactly the same at the back as well. Okay. Sir, can we get decimal similarity questions? No. If you have it in decimals, then keep it in fraction form. Okay, no need to try and bring it down to the nearest tenth or hundredth or thousandth. Okay. So just keep it simple. Yes, cross section is a slice. Okay. That's a very short and specific way to put it. Cross section question as a like for example, imagine a shape is made out of bread. Okay. So what shape do you get every time you slice it? Okay. That is what your cross section is. Sir, can we leave the answer in mixed fraction? Yeah, yeah. You're not going to lose any marks if you leave your answer in mixed fraction. Kisne bola, you're going to leave lose marks. Okay? You don't lose marks leaving uh, for leaving answers in mixed fraction. Unless of course the question has like a specific condition. Okay. Um this is pretty easy. So let's do this. Let's do this question. So it says here, the diagram shows part of an earring. It is in the shape of a sector of radius 3 cm and angle 45 degrees. Okay. From which sector of radius, 2 cm, and angle 45 degrees has been removed? Okay, so you have a larger sector, and from it, you're removing a smaller sector. Okay. So if the question is about similar areas, then we square. Yes, if it's about area, then we square. If it's about volume, then we cube. Okay. Okay, so how do we calculate the shaded area? It's pretty easy. 45 upon 360 into pi into 3 squared. Okay, that will give us the area of the larger uh, sector minus the area of the smaller sector, 45 upon 360 into pi into 2 squared. Take Okay. So 45 and 360, I think we can simplify. So 36 divided by 4 is 45, is it? 45 ones or 2, 0, 1, 80. No, wait, 8. Yeah, 45 ones are 45 eights are. Okay. If you're not too sure, then just do it step by step. Maybe start with 9, maybe start with 5 or something. Okay. okay, now, then we can do the same over here, 1 upon 8. So here's what we're looking at. We're basically looking at 9 pi upon 8 minus 4 pi upon 8. Okay, so 9 pi minus 4 pi is 5 pi, 5 pi upon 8. And there you go, that's your answer. 5 upon 8 pi is the area of the shaded region. Okay, that's what we were supposed to do, and we've done just that, 5 upon 8 pi. Then it says... The earring is cut from a sheet of silver. The mass of one centimeter cube of the silver sheet is 1.6 grams. By taking pi to be three, estimate the mass of the earring. Okay. So basically we have a formula. We have a, pro we, we know that one centimeter cube is equal to 1.6 gram. Okay. So one centimeter cube is area and 1.6 grams is the mass. So anything that's one centimeter cube in area, according to the question, Okay, according to the question, anything that's one centimeter square, sorry, I think I said centimeter cube. Anything that's one centimeter square it has a mass of 1.6 gram. Okay, if you're using this sheet of silver that the question has mentioned. Now, our earring over here has an area of 5 upon 8 pi, and the question told us to take pi to be equal to 3. Now, what is the mass of this earring going to be? All you have to do now is cross multiply. So, it's a direct proportion question. So, 5 upon 3 uh, into 5 upon 8 into 3 is 15 upon 8 into 1.6 that is what x is going to be equal to now write a 1.6 as fraction so it's going to be equal to 15 upon 8 into 16 upon 10 okay so 8 ones are 8 twos are 2 ones are 2 fives are 5 ones are 5 threes are so x equals to what x equals to 3 grams and there you go that's your answer okay now there's just one last question which I'd like to solve with you guys before we leave. And that's this. Now again, it might look like a scary question. Okay. 
but it's not that scary. Okay. Let's see what it says. It says the diagram shows the metal cover for a circular drain. Okay. Water drains out through the shaded sections. O is the center of circles with radii 1 centimeter, 2 centimeter, 3 centimeter, 4 centimeter, and 5 centimeter. Okay. So basically, this is 1 centimeter. Okay. What you're looking at in blue. What you're looking at in uh, what you're looking at in red is two centimeter, okay. Then green se jo aap dekh rahe hain wo three centimeter hai, okay. And then blue se jo aap dekh rahe hain wo four centimeter. And then all the way through is five centimeter, okay. So just keep that in mind, okay. Then it says the cover has rotational symmetry of order six. Now why exactly is the question telling us this? The reason why the question is telling us this is to tell us that all these shaded segments are equal. So that means this this is equal to this okay all these all six of these are equal and just like that all six of these are equal that's why the question is telling you that okay as any other they're unequal in that case it would have been impossible to do any calculations over here okay okay so then it says calculate the area of the shaded section a b c d giving your answer in terms of pi okay so a b c d is what we need to calculate the area of. so first of all let's put some importance on what we're doing over here Okay, let's outline the sector that we're going to be using. So we're going to be using two sectors. One is OBC and the other is OAD. So in order to calculate the area of shaded section ABCD, here's what we will do. Area of sector OBC minus the area of sector OAD. Okay. Now, what's the angle? According to the question, BOC equals to what? BOC equals to 40 degrees. Okay, so that means this angle will be common for all the sectors there are. Okay. So for BOC, it's going to be 40 upon 360 into pi. And what would be the radius? That's going to be 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So pi into 4 square. Okay. Minus 40 upon 360 into pi into 3 squared. Okay. So let's figure this out. This and this gets cancelled out. 4 upon 36 is 1 upon 9. So 1 upon 9 into 16 pi minus 1 upon 9 into 9 pi. Okay. Now you can simply simplify. If you want, you can cross out the 9 pi and 9 pi. Okay. So you have 16 upon 9 pi minus 9 and 9 is 1. So that's pi. And then let's take the LCM. So the LCM is going to be 9. So we have 16 pi, this gets multiplied by 9, so this also gets multiplied by 9, minus 9 pi, 16 minus 9 is 7, so we have 7 upon 9 pi as our answer. So there you go, 7 upon 9 pi is the final answer. Okay, pretty easy. Now here's part B. Part B says, the total area of the metal, unshaded sections of the cover is 55 upon 3. Calculate the total area of the shaded sections, giving your answer in terms of pi. Okay, so that's pretty easy. That is going to be total minus shaded equals to what? Equals to unshaded. Total minus shaded equals to unshaded. Now, how will I work out the total area? The total area is going to be equal to pi r square, and the radius that we're going to use is pi. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Pi into 5 square minus the shaded, which we don't know. Okay, equals to what? Equals to 55 upon 3 pi. So here we have 25 pi minus 55 upon 3, which is equal to what? Which is equal to the shaded area. Now, if you work out 50, if you work this out, let's see what do we get. 25 into 3 is 75. So 75 minus 55 upon 3. And of course, don't forget the pi. So 75 minus 55 is 20, so we have 20 upon 3 pi, and there you go, that's your answer. 20 upon 3 pi centimeter square. Okay, so that's it. Part two says, calculate the fraction of the total area of the cover that is metal unshaded. Okay, so basically here's what we're going to do. Calculate the fraction of the total area of the cover that is unshaded. Okay, so that means unshaded divide by the total. That's what we're going to do. Okay, if we had to calculate percentage, then we would have multiplied it by 100 as well. Okay, so what's the unshaded area? The unshaded area is 55 upon 3. Okay, and we need to calculate it as a fraction of the total area. So what's the total area? The total area is 25 pi. Okay, pi and pi eventually cancel. So we have 55 divided by 3 
divided by 25. That means 55 divided by 3 into 1 upon 25. So let's simplify this. 5 11s are, 5 5s are. Okay, and now 3 into 5 is 15. So we have 11 upon 15 as our final answer. And there you go. That's it. That's the answer. Tomorrow Urdu paper. <laughs> All right. Good luck. Why are you leaving the pie? Okay, where? Where did I leave the pie? If you're talking about over here, then, you know, oh, achha, wait, you're talking about over here. Yeah, you're right. I forgot to write pie over here. Okay, I've written it now. I've written it now. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay, so should we multiply 3 by 3.14? No, we shouldn't. The question says giving your answer in terms of pi. Okay. And it's paper 1 anyway, so that'll be very difficult to multiply it by 3.14. Okay, so I'll stop here. And I hope you guys learned paper 1 mensuration. And I hope the fear of mensuration has gone down a little not significantly but i hope it's gone down a little okay and let me see if there's one more question that we can solve before we call it a day yeah you know what let's solve this question let's do this question okay so change of plans not leaving let's just do this one last question and then we'll call it a day this is an important question so this question says the volume of a sphere is 4 upon 3 pi r cube okay 20 spheres, each of radius 3 centimeter, have a total volume of k pi. Find the value of k. Okay. So 20 spheres, each of radius 3 centimeters. So that means 20 multiplied by 4 upon 3. Okay. Pi into 3 cubed. This is what we have to find the volume of. We have to find out the volume of the total 20 spheres. Okay. So here's what we're looking at. 3 cubed is 27. So 27 into 4 upon 3 into 20. So 3 1s are, 3 9s are, 9 into 4 is 36, 36 into 2 is 72, so 720. Value of k equals to what? It's equal to 720. Okay. Now here's part B. Part B says the spheres are inside an open cylinder with radius 6 centimeter. The cylinder stands on a horizontal surface and contains enough water to cover the sphere. Okay. Calculate the change in depth of the water when the spheres are taken out of the cylinder. Now, the change in depth will happen because of the spheres. The change in depth will happen because of the spheres. Okay. So, what we need to calculate is basically we need to calculate the volume of the spheres, which we've already done, okay, and equate it with the volume of the cylinder. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We need to calculate the volume of the 20 spheres, which is something we've already calculated, 720 pi. And this is something that we're going to equate with the volume of the cylinder, okay? So what is that going to be equal to? That's going to be equal to pi into six square into the height, okay? So pi and pi gets canceled out. We have 36 h to be equal to 720 and h is equals to what? h is equals to 20 centimeter. Okay, now I really hope you guys understand this concept. Now remember, if you want to calculate the change in depth, change in depth will always be equal to, will always, first of all, it will be due to the surface, the, the object that you take out. Okay, so here, since we're taking out the sphere, okay, we're taking out how many spheres? We're taking out 20 spheres. So the change in depth will happen because of the spheres that we're taking out. Okay, so initially, let's say this, Let's say with the 20 spheres, this is what the volume was, okay? And once you've taken out the spheres, what will happen is that the volume will go down, okay? So after you've taken out the spheres, like I said, the depth of the water will decrease, okay? So previously, if let's say the depth of the water was equal to this, let me draw this again. So if let's say this is what the depth of the water was previously. Okay. Now, obviously, when you take out the spheres, the depth of the water will go down. Okay. So let's say that this is the new depth of the water. Okay. 
now the change that you see that has occurred okay the change that you see that has occurred okay so this is basically equal to what this region is equal to the volume of 20 spheres okay so it's like a little cylinder has been formed okay and we need to calculate the volume of that little cylinder okay so you can see that previously the water was up until here so you can say that once you remove that a small cylinder has been formed excuse my drawing please and that's what you need to calculate the height of okay so that's why when you equate it with the volume of the 20 cylinder spheres that have been removed you get the height you get the change in depth okay okay so Achha, why not 20 pi that's because the question told us to find out the coefficient of pi okay which is 720 okay Okay, so I'll stop here. All right, I'll see you guys in the next stream. Tomorrow, inshallah, I think I'll most likely be streaming ad maths, but let's see. So that's it. Take care, everyone. Best of luck to everyone who have their exam tomorrow. Okay, do your best. And I hope you guys ace it, inshallah, effortlessly. So that's it. Take care, everyone.